Hello there, champions of milk. Alright, fitting in a bunch of duels. I do love me some invasions, and I feel like they're more fun because of all that chaos. However, I also have a lot of fun learning uh, my weapon and, and learning how the game works, and being able to focus in on specific things helps with that, and duels also helps with that too. It's, it's a more focused experience. Because of all that craziness invasions, it kind of makes it hard to uh, learn the fundamentals of your weapon if you're trying to just hop right in there. Um, so I'm training with the, uh, the Undead Ring and No Rouge. Just kind of get myself. I would recommend Life Ring, Princess Ring swaps there. And I'm putting on the Leo Ring instead of the Hornet because those thrust counters are really, really good. That extra damage, 25% damage in thrust counters. I could have put on the Night Ring, but it's only an extra 9 AR, get to that 40, so not a big deal. So I'm not going to be using the uh, Karthus Rouge. And with that Undead Ring, it kind of helps me train. And this was actually my very first duel. This will be the second video I'm putting up, but this was the first duel I had, and this guy bodied me. So I take a couple hits here, and I have hyper-armored through the uh, two-handed R1 of Claymores before with this weapon art. So I think what, what's about to happen here, I'm going to go for the weapon art, and he's going to knock me out of it with the uh, first two-handed R1 of that greatsword. So either the Wolf Knight greatsword does more poise damage than the Claymore, or what's happening is poise is affecting hyper-armor, or super-armor as it should be called, uh, since it can be broken. And it seems like there's a timed cooldown on when uh, that poise effect, that extra ability to resist more than one hit with hyper armor, um, activates again. And it seems like it, it's not just taking a hit during hyper armor, it could be any hit, because those hits I took were during a, a running R1 that I poorly, poorly telegraphed and just like got read like a book by that guy. Uh, so I'm definitely keeping my ears, ears open to the. Uh, the word on this hyper armor because there's a lot of funny things happening here um great way to use this as as a uh, roll catch when people are coming in on you if you start it up and land it at close range right as they're standing up out of that roll you can basically smash them before they even get their their hit off and land a great great combo uh for off that roll punish um of course, you know, you really need to do it against somebody being very aggressive, and it needs to be at close range. Uh, there I try for the parry, but it would have been maybe another good opportunity to do that. But he double rolled anyway, so maybe not. Anyway, so the hyper armor, um, I found out uh, some new things about it after I made these, uh, after I did these duels. And ultra great swords, um, basically all weapons, like I said in a previous vid, they have more stagger potential on their first R1. So what you really want to be focused on doing against ultra weapons or, or slow weapons if you're trying to land those trades is baiting out at least one swing and then going into it. You don't want to be trading with that first swing of ultra weapons, uh, the glaive type weapons. Just really be careful about that first swing, bait it out, and if you see that second one coming, that's when you land that trade punish. So here we have a run-of-the-mill, careful katana duel. This guy's using the black blade. Definitely not the strongest katana. Probably the weakest. Um, however, it can be two-handed. And there's so many interesting techniques and opportunities that open up when you can two-hand your weapon, specifically because you can block with it. And there's all sorts of funny things that allows you to do in this game. Uh, so I'll talk about that a little bit in the, uh, the showcase, like the weaknesses of this weapon, specifically in duels because you have to use it in a, in a twin weapon stance. And here the guy, I'm pretty sure he was not on my, my screen there, on his screen right there. He was trying to space it out and then get back in. It's a pretty tricky game that you have to play with a short weapon. Uh, if you had something like a halberd or a washing pole or a spear, you can space that out a lot safer, but I'm almost 100% sure that guy was trying to walk space that weapon art so that he could land the punish in time. Because if you try and roll out of the way, um, you can roll into it and, and grab a roll BS sometimes if you know they're going to go for that follow-up L1. However, they could just roll away. Um, the really the only surefire way to punish that weapon art with a weapon that's not super duper long is 
using that walk spacing and getting it just right so that you don't have the recovery of your roll to have to deal with and slow you down to land that punish. Um, it's a risky maneuver, but it's worth it and what that guy kind of had to do in that situation. So there you can land those running R1s in between the swings of big old hyper armor weapons. Very dangerous, of course. You can land a brutal, brutal trade of like, you know, losing 800 health for that 200 that you wanted to get in. Um, but worth it a lot of the time. You really want to do be whittling down these hyper armor users uh, because that health is sort of their currency to win. And there you see the uh, it's pretty easy to break somebody out of that that weapon or hyper armor. So it's something you really have to be careful of against weapons with hyper armor, good range, good speed, good power. Can punish parry attempts and a bunch of stuff, but it's something that can be punished as well. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you stay milky.